What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're taking a break from the grow room and the greenhouse because it's snowing, it's cold, and we've got to prepare some taters. What's taters, Brussels? What's taters, huh? Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. All right, so the things you're gonna need to do this is pretty simple. First, you need your potatoes. Now, we did this about two weeks ago, and we properly chitted our potatoes. That's chitting with a CH, um, not an SH, a CH. And that basically just means that we are forcing eyes on our potatoes. Go back and watch that video, it's super helpful. You wanna do that before you get to this stage, because if you don't actually have eyes formed, you can't properly cut your eyes and divide your potatoes up. Next thing you're gonna need are some egg cartons. These are the cardboard kind. You don't wanna use styrofoam. They've been using cardboard egg cartons for this exact reason for many, many years. And basically what it does is it allows airflow through the potato so they scab properly. It won't hold moisture so they won't rot. And you can do things like they do on a commercial scale. It's just, I like to show you what you can do on a home scale. So on a commercial scale, they would use what they call chitting trays. Um, and that's basically just a, uh, it's a wire rack that's put underneath. It's hardware cloth. They wrap around some two by fours. And they basically make these racks that allow airflow to circulate through. And they do that so that the potato can scab properly. You can just use them, again, you can just use cardboard egg containers. And then you're also gonna need some honey. This is actually used to, uh, to prevent the potato from scabbing um, because it's actually antibacterial and antifungal. So you can also use wettable sulfur or like powdered sulfur. But um, if you use honey, which a lot of people have, it's gonna have the same effect. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about here is why you can't just take this potato and throw it right in the ground. Now, granted, you totally could, but should you? No, you definitely shouldn't. And the reason why is because all of these eyes are future plants. And if you were to throw this whole potato in the ground, a couple things can happen. One is this potato is going to rot eventually, and anytime it rots, it can um, harbor things like, like mold and mildew that can actually uh, harm the plant's health. So, um, the less potato there is, the better. And also, um, when all these eyes start growing, these are all future plants. And if you have, like in this case here, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, seven different sprouting points, that's seven plants in one location. That's gonna be a lot of competition for space, and it's ultimately gonna lead to smaller yield and potentially smaller harvest, um, and you know, smaller potatoes even. So um, it's better to cut them, and that's what we're gonna do uh, by, by basically um, curing these potatoes and causing them to, uh, to scab. So when you divide out a potato, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna kind of draw some like lines here, not really actually draw lines, but kind of like visualize where you're gonna cut them so you maximize the amount of eyes per cut. And so I can kind of see here, like there's a clear, a clear cut right here where I'm gonna get a good amount of eyes in that cut. And this is great. I mean, this is gonna have like one, two, three, four plants, which is about the maximum, amount of, uh, the maximum amount of plants you want on like a single potato like this. Now you could take it and you could actually cut it on an angle. Again, we're kind of just gonna cut this off. So now we have like a wedge with just one eye. You could do this or you could have kept it whole too and just kind of kept the maximum amount of eyes, right? But we're gonna maximize by kind of cutting them into wedges. The next thing you wanna look at is you wanna look at, um, so this one is kind of already exhausted. We'll keep this one on the side. It'll probably form some more eyes as it goes, but this one I'm gonna discard for right now because there's not really anything I can kind of visualize here. This one is a really great example of, I mean, this has so many, so many uh, sprouting points for eyes that are already developing. And so I can take this, I can cut it in half Okay, there's still way too many. So now I can cut it in a quarter like that. And now I have got one, two, three, four sprouting points there. And here I have one, two, three sprouting points here. That's a great, that's a really great example. Um, over here, this is another wonderful one. This is really, really healthy. You see these eyes are nicely developed and they're already starting to, to chit very well. So, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna cut it in half first. 
Okay, so now uh, I have one, two, three, four. It's pretty big, there's a lot of potato. So again, to kind of reduce just the amount of potato that I'm gonna be putting in the ground, I can take it like this. And now I can take it like this. And I'm basically, I have one eye with all of this potato. So this, this way I'm actually kind of reducing the amount of potato that I have to, uh, to put in the garden and I have less risk of that, that rot. Now I can take it like this. And now there's so much potato here that one would say, well, why don't you just cut it like this? And you totally could. But here's the thing is that this is gonna dry out and it's gonna shrink and you're gonna lose a lot of your moisture content from this tiny slice. So you don't, there is kind of a fine line between is it too small or is it too big? Like this, this is about as small as you'd wanna get for a single slice. Like if I cut this in half, it would just shrink down and there would not be a whole lot of energy left. The starch is the energy that causes these eyes to grow. So the less starch that there is, the, you know, the slower these are gonna grow or they might not even grow at all. But too much can lead to rot, which you don't want. Okay, so I know a lot of people are gonna ask this and that's kinda of like, what do you go for when you're cutting your potatoes? Like what dictates which direction you slice it and things like that. So when I'm cutting my potatoes, I go for between two and four eyes per slice. Sometimes you're only gonna get one. Like in this case here, there's nothing you can do. I just got one, one eye on this potato because that's all the eyes that were forming on that slice. That's not gonna be the end of the world. What I will do is I will take this and I will drop it in the garden with another one that only has like one. So like this one right here. So I'll take, once these, I'll scab these over and cure them individually and I'll put them in the garden together. That way I have two plants. Because you know, you're gonna be taking up about the same amount of space, but you're gonna be getting that much more yield from two plants. Any more than two though, or sorry, any more than four, and you start to get overcompeted and overcrowded. So the goal is between two and four eyes, ideally, per slice. So in this case here, you know, like I said, I've got like five different spots, but if I take it and I cut it like that, I've got three right there, it's perfect. I'm not gonna dissect that anymore. Could you slice it more? Absolutely, but do you have to? No. And then all these, like this is left with like, you know, basically nothing and then two. So I've got two here on this kind of wedge here. And so you can kind of see how I'm stacking them up. The, the slices that don't have any eyes on them, I'm gonna leave them in this tray. They may, for, they may form eyes at a later time, but they don't have anything on them right now to, to cut. So I'm leaving them in this tray. The ones that are gonna form eyes or have already formed eyes, um, I have them here in these egg cartons. And then the final thing you're going to wanna do is you're going to wanna sterilize the potatoes. Now again, you can use powdered sulfur. Basically, you're just gonna take powdered sulfur and you're gonna dip them in the powdered sulfur. Or what you can do is you can take honey. Honey is very acidic. It has, an, uh, it has a pH of right around four. And so we're gonna take a paintbrush and we're gonna take some honey and we're going to simply paint on the potato. So the surface of the potato is basically like a Petri dish and it's the perfect environment to grow things like mold and bacteria because it's not only damp, but it also is a rich carbohydrate source. And so the starches are the carbohydrate source that things like mold and bacteria thrive on. That's why if you went back to, if you recall back to high school biology class, you take a slice of potato, wipe it on like a toilet seat or on the phone, and then you'd put it in a warm location and you could actually count the, the bacterial colonies on the slices of potato. So we don't wanna grow bacteria and mold on your potatoes. So what do you do? Well, you simply inhibit the growth with something acidic. Now, again, you want a strong acidic substance like powdered sulfur or honey, and that's going to basically uh, kill um, anything on the surface. It's gonna sterilize the surface so that uh, the potato can just scab over and, and dry normally. So this, because it's a sugar, it's going to draw some water out of the potato. That is very normal. But over the course of about a week or two, you'll notice that dries up. It'll turn kind of, uh, kind of well, very dry and kind of leathery, almost like the outside of potato. It'll turn very dry and leathery, and that lets you know that it's cured properly. At that point, you can then take it and put it into your garden. You wanna let them cure for about two weeks before you put them into your garden, 
because if they haven't cured properly, they're absolutely gonna rot. So it's really that simple. A lot of people have written in asking how to do this, and I thought this would make a really quick, simple video for you guys. Plus, we're gonna be planting our potatoes really soon in the garden, so I thought I'd make a good video for you guys. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did learn something new, make sure you let me know down in the comments box down below. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We have tons more gardening content coming out, and before you know it, we'll be out in the garden. So um, make sure you follow along. We'll be planting these potatoes in the next couple weeks out in the garden, and uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care, guys.